Governments across the world are carrying out massive disinfectant drives and are also investing heavily to develop disinfectant chambers to fight this pandemic. Cities which are major epicenters and hotspots are being sprayed with huge amounts of chemicals. Public spaces such as markets and squares are being fumigated as well. But this initiative might not benefit human health. The World Health Organization has said that spraying disinfectants on streets and carrying out large-scale sanitization of public spaces would not eliminate the novel coronavirus. In fact, the WHO went further to add that disinfectant drives could pose a health risk as well. In the COVID-19 response document on cleaning and disinfecting surfaces, the WHO has claimed that disinfection could be ineffective. The WHO said that spraying disinfectant would be unable to kill the virus due to its inactive nature when it is exposed to dirt and debris in the environment. The disinfectant's inability to cover all surfaces for the minimum duration of the time will also add to the redundancy of these virus cleanup drives. The document stresses that spraying chemicals on individuals could be potentially dangerous and it is not recommended under any circumstances. The WHO statement also specifically mentioned how this could physically and psychologically harm the person undergoing sanitation. The document also listed out how chlorine and other chemicals could cause bronchospasm, gastrointestinal effects and skin and eye irritations. In the United States, the American Association of Poison Control Center released data that shows a substantial <coughs> spike in deaths due to accidental poisoning caused by the household bleach chlorine and other disinfectant chemicals that are being used since the last two months. U.S. President Donald Trump also was heavily criticized after he suggested that Americans inject themselves with disinfectants to cure coronavirus. Countries like China, India, South Korea and the U.K. are also carrying out large-scale disinfection drives. China uses hydro hydrogen peroxide to do the same. But the WHO has now issued a strong warning against systematic spraying and fumigating of chemicals on both indoor and outdoor spaces. And as of now, the lethal coronavirus has infected more than 4.7 million people and killed more than 313,000 people across the world. Let's now tell you about a new report from the European Union on the COVID-19 outbreak. Now, a few days back, the European Union bowed to heavy pressure from Beijing. While the world criticized China, the European Union was forced to soften its criticism, or to put it more accurately, the report was watered down. And now, tables have turned, because the European Union has claimed that China is trying to divide and rule. The European Union's foreign policy chief has accused China of trying to exploit differences among the EU nations. China is attempting to drive a wedge through the bloc. The European Union is becoming increasingly wary of Beijing's attempts. And China claims to be promoting a unique version of multilateralism, while it is actually pressing the countries to push disinformation. China will continue to seek advantage of the different views on EU diplomacy, therefore... The EU foreign policy chief, Joseph Borrell, has urged the member nations to maintain collective discipline. There has been a paradigm shift in the EU-China relationship since the pandemic played out. While Chinese President Xi Jinping has had a direct conversation with several European leaders about the global health crisis, he never spoke to any European Union official. Yet another example of Beijing's strategy to divide and rule. The initial European Union report criticizing China on COVID-19 was first delayed and then rewritten. Yes, it was China that moved quickly to block the release of the document and it was China that forced the European Union to pull back. The fight over this document is a part of a broad global argument over the COVID-19 narrative. It also comes at a time when the EU hopes to win trade concessions from Beijing and restore a rich relationship once a pandemic has passed.